We here in the United States always believe that we have the freest media of all. Well, maybe, just maybe, others have very free media, too, so we're going to ask them directly. Ishil Sariuji from uh, CNN in Turkey and Mohammed Hayat from Aj TV in Pakistan are with us right here on Public Exposure. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we get to you, I just want to remind everyone that they come to us through the World Affairs Council. Uh, the website is uh, world-affairs.org. Go to that site. You're going to learn an awful lot about the world around you and the world that you don't get to see every day. Uh, fortunately, though, you are both here with us. Uh, Ishil, uh, CNNTurk.com, so mm -hmm. yeah, uh, you're it. with the big voice of CNN, huh? Yeah, we are, we are. What do you do for CNN? I'm a reporter in CNN Turk. I'm on the field. Uh, I mostly cover uh, the hot, hot agenda going on in Turkey. Uh, I'm not the parliamentary reporter because our capital is in Ankara, so we have parliamentary reporters that, but we are covering the political stuff and the economic stuff which is going on all around Istanbul. And I'm also covering the international issues in Istanbul. Uh, well, Stan, uh, let me thank you for the opportunity which you, uh, you give us uh, to speak directly to the people of Seattle and the rest of the America. Uh, it's really an opportunity that we should discuss some of the issues back in our country because mm -hmm. I found that most of the people, uh, whether they are in Washington, D.C., Rochester, Chicago, wh wherever it is, but most of the people still doesn't know how the tribals look like, how the Taliban's are, uh, how they are much powerful than even the people of, and the government of the United States and the rest of the NATO countries. So uh, in, back in our home, uh, I belong to uh, the tribal area, which is FATA, the uh, federally administered tribal area. It's uh, a 2,500 long area between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Um, and you cover that whole area? Yes, I depend on that, that whole oh. area. It started from uh, bordering areas of the Central Asia, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and adjacent to uh, China or Chitral. Uh, and then it goes to uh, Afghanistan, and it ended up at Iran. So a, a long area with uh, lots of troubles. So you're the bureau chief, so not only do you report, but you also work with other reporters as well? Uh, sure. I, um, uh, I have that uh, administrative post also. I have to go into those areas uh, to look after my journalist, uh, even sometimes even to cross the border, uh, go to the, uh, the, the people working for my network inside that Afghanistan, whether it is Coast, uh, Kandahar, Helmand, Uruzgan, or Ningarhar, mm -hmm. in those areas. So I have to take care of the, my uh, guys and uh, the journalist, and uh, I'll also uh, go to the field to know what the reality is. Well, thank you both for being willing to, to answer some questions that I think Americans would have of you, and so we might as well get right into it. Do we have the video ready? If we do, this is, this is a video that was on uh, a little bit of television here in the United States. Mostly if it was seen on the United States, it was seen over the Internet, but it was on a lot more television stations in other parts of the world, probably including your station in any event. Mm -hmm. So are we ready to go? Let's go with that. This is uh, part of the execution of Saddam Hussein. What was the reaction in your country first, uh, Hayat? Uh, sure, at people-to-people -people level, it, uh, uh, it sounds bad in those days when Saddam Hussein, because after taking uh, over the Iraq and uh, um, whatever happened in Iraq, uh, the people in my country is that uh, have a close ties, an emotional ties, though uh, most of the people in my country would not uh, know about much of what Iraq is, how many provinces it has, and what kind of uh, person personally and administratively Saddam Hussein was. But it, uh, so they it, didn't even know that Hussein, no, Hussein they, was at least accused of some very, very difficult no, they, crimes. They, 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 but, but to them, it, it, it was a hero, a hero of the Islamic world. Uh, who have been attacked by the United States and the rest of the uh, NATO countries and other. So uh, to them, it, it then turns into a symbol, uh, a symbol of uh, Islam and, you know, that kind of uh, So he's a, he's a martyr today. Uh, yeah. And um, um, uh, this this happens uh, to me. I think the same kind of feelings were there, which I have found in Afghanistan also. Uh, people feel sorry 
uh, mostly those people who are uh, uh, pro-Islam or uh, mm -hmm. who has that kind of feelings towards Saddam Hussein. Uh, though in some parts of my countries during uh, the Kuwait war, the, the war between Iraq and Kuwait, when he invaded Kuwait, uh, at that time also uh, the people felt some kind of sympathies because of uh, uh, that Islamic thoughts that he had that uh, I have to build an Islamic empire over here and uh, uh, would uh, uh, damage the, the interest of the United States throughout the globe. So that kind of feelings that found maybe right or wrong, but this is what uh, the local Pakistanis believe. Hmm. Sheila, in Turkey, you're a, yeah, a secular are, government. Yeah, we are a secular government, and we are dealing with a, my, I mean, my government and my state is dealing with the Kurdish issue. So the reactions were much more different than in Pakistan and then in Turkey, because we are, we have a border with Iraq, and he, uh, Saddam Hussein was our neighboring uh, governor, so the reactions were in Turkey were uh, much more different from one side to another because we have a Kurdish movement in Turkey uh, who supported Saddam Hussein very closely. So for them, of course, the execution was a very sad news, but uh, they didn't react it very highly, I can say. But for uh, the, um, the majority of Turkish people, it was, of course, a murder. He was a dictator, and he was, a, uh, he was trying to uh, rule the Sharia laws, which uh, in Turkey, even if we are a Muslim country, are not ruling on. So uh, for majority of the Turkish people, the reaction was, uh, of course, not being happy with uh, the uh, guy who is killed, but uh, the, uh, he was murdered for the majority. But now you're not saying that Hussein had Kurdish support, though, are you? Because he was, uh, he was executed as a result of him being convicted of um, basically a mass murder of Kurds. Yeah, but uh, still, uh, the, the, there were the branches of uh, PKK, the Kurdish terrorist movement, mm -hmm. who had a relationship with the uh, Saddam Hussein and the, his uh, organization. So. Yeah. Well, let's go to uh, back to 9-11, though. The, the guy mm -hmm. who apparently was the mastermind of 9-11 was uh, Osama bin Laden. And uh, he apparently is still out there somewhere, uh, supposedly in your country. Uh, but I have a, I have a question. Um, should the media help find bin Laden? Ishil? I don't think that media mm, must play such a role because it's not our job to find the the, the guy. I mean, oh, it's not our job to show to point out where he is. And I think I, I don't think that there is a big difference if whether he is found there or not because Al Qaeda is there and Al Qaeda is Al Qaeda, which is which it is very uh, strong structures and strong economic st structures as well. I think it's not going to create a very big difference whether he is going to be found dead or whether he's going to be found allowed mm -hmm. uh, alive because Al Qaeda is Al Qaeda and it is. Great very point. Hayat, let me ask you about that because you work right in that area. So does it matter whether Bin Laden's found or not? No, I'd support Ishal uh, for that because uh, it doesn't matter whether Osama is dead or alive. It's basically uh, the issue of terror politics, it's the issue of uh, terror economy in that area, and also a, a kind of belief. Uh, the belief which thinks that terror politics work and, and it still works in my country back because uh, nobody has uh, stood up against the suicide attackers. Nobody has that technology to tackle with those suicide bombers and hundreds and thousands of people because of the circumstances, unfortunately, what kind of circumstances that we are facing, they are turning into that kind of uh, uh, suicide bombers and uh, belief in terror that if they had the weapon, if they had certain kind of uh, uh, beliefs in their minds uh, and they could use it, they can uh, get profit of it. Uh, and uh, uh, as, as well as the matter of Osama bin Laden is concerned, I don't think it, it, it matters so long for now because uh, uh, the mastermind, the, the real mastermind who was behind the 9-11 attack, uh, that was uh, Khalid Sheikh, and he has been captured from Pakistan. Uh, so uh, I don't think, uh, I think that uh, now the issue is that of the terror politics, the terror economy, and uh, the global issue were there. Because, uh, you know, Stan, uh, I uh, always symbolize my land as a chessboard. There are politics. There is China, there is Afghanistan. Inside Afghanistan, there is NATO, a lot of countries. And at the end, there is Iran. Uh, and on the other side, there is a big giant uh, in that region, India. So it's a chessboard now. 
Hmm. We're going to get back to that in just a moment. I just want to remind everyone right here on Public Exposure, thanks to the World Affairs Council, we're talking with Ishil Sariuchi of CNN Turkey and Mohammed Hayat of Aj TV in Pakistan. Go to the World Affairs Council website. You're going to learn an awful lot. Let's stay in Pakistan for just a moment. There's a, a, a UPI story out, and there's an analysis. Pakistan's prime minister's moment of truth, new prime minister. And the article says, Pakistan's new prime minister, Yusuf Raza uh, Gilani, yeah. Uh, has been plunged into the heart of the storm. U.S. President George Bush and front-running Democratic presidential challenger Barack Obama are both focusing on him to clean out al-Qaeda and the Taliban from their strongholds. Is, uh, is that what the Pakistani people want? Uh, to an extent, that's very true because now uh, it burns them. Uh, like looking into the fire when it was burning in, uh, inside Afghanistan, it was a little bit different. But now when we are facing it really in the ground in that area, uh, when uh, school girls, children have been kidnapped, slaughtered, killed, uh, houses burned, the schools burned, the, the basic health units has been closed up, shunned up, uh, no video, no entertainment, there's nothing mm -hmm. over there in that land, and there is a continuous kind of fear. And uh, in that fear, there is still a hope, a hope that, uh, that this might be a solution, a political solution, which I have heard from Barack Obama, uh, but uh, John McCann is more louder than him in that, in that uh, content. Mm -hmm. Probably he might have the experience of that. Uh, so uh, uh, to us, uh, we, uh, when we look into the matter, uh, I think that uh, negotiation and uh, the basic homework, uh, mm -hmm. it will work, rather than well, what sending more troops. If you negotiate, what does uh, the al-Qaeda want? Uh, no, uh, not a negotiation with the al-Qaeda. There are, look, al-Qaeda will never stand there if it doesn't have the local support. And up till now, they had to an extent some local support, th though they are losing it because of the new government policies and the policies of our Awami National Party, which is a progressive nationalist mm -hmm. movement in that area. Uh, it had a, a, a hundred years long history in that area, and they believe in, and in, in our country, it's known as Jirga, the uh, negotiation table. So uh, if uh, we go into the negotiation with the local people, Elin them, the Al Qaeda elements. I don't think that they would find any roof or any ground for their activities because you know Afghan knows how to fight. I mean, if they stood up against the Arabs, they can do it. Let's go to Turkey for a moment because Turkey has its own difficulties right now. Uh, from the London Telegraph, uh, Turkish warplanes bomb northern Iraq in uh, terror retaliation. Uh, Istanbul police said that they have identified a suspect believed to have planted the bombs and claimed the man had links to the Kurdish Workers' Party, the PKK, camps targeted by uh, Turkish warplanes. Difficult time on that border. Difficult times, always difficult times, and since the, it was the easier times since three, three years, three months before, but now the, the, that region, the border between Iraq and Turkey is getting now more and more hot in these days. Uh, we are all, uh, covering those kinds of news every week, I can say. The thing is, uh, yeah, I, while before beginning our program, we were talking with you whether there is going to be a Kurdish state there or not. I do believe that there is a Kurdish state there in the region already. Uh, they have their flags. It doesn't matter if it is federal or not. Uh, they are going to vote for the constitution. And there is a, a there is a Kurdish state there, and they, there is a huge Kurdish community living in there. Back to the Turkey, uh, there is a huge Kurdish community living in the Turkey. The Turkey had very uh, bad policies integrating that uh, Kurdish minority to the system. Uh, I have been to southeastern parts of Turkey uh, very Along often. the Iraqi border. Yeah, in the Iraqi border. Uh, the people are there are very poor. They don't have anything to do. And now they are, t uh, for at least 20 years, they are trying to face uh, uh, the difficulties of the, uh, we can say, war going on in the region. So they don't have anything to do. They don't have uh, their economic uh, structures. So uh, we are on that point now. There is a uh, whether we accept or not, there is a Kurdish state there. What must Turkish government or governments do is to be able to integrate all these uh, Turkish minority, Kurdish minority living in Turkey, because 
I do talk with Kurdish people. They want to stay with the Turkish state. Most of them do not want to separate from Turkey, and uh, most of them do not want to leave their uh, leave their houses and do, want, do, do not want to int, uh, immigrate to the Iraq, Iraqian part. This is one of the fears of Turkish yeah. government. Is, is there a possibility that the PKK will be abolished? I don't think so because it is uh, after the uh, after Abdullah Öcalan uh, is being ca caught and he's now in the prison. It lost uh, a lot of power, but it is still uh, strong. Uh, wh while I was here in America t two or three days ago, mm -hmm. there was a bombing, a bomb attack uh, in the city center of Istanbul. For 18 people are died, 140 people are injured in that attack. Uh, there was two possible uh, names are behind the attack. One, uh, Kaide, uh, two, PKK, the Kurdish movement. Mm -hmm. So Is it there shows any relationship between the two, the no, PKK no, no. and the Al Qaeda at all? Uh, not no, not no, very. No. Just just separate independent gripes. I'm I'm talking about two possibilities. Mm -hmm. That's a recent event shows us uh, both Al Qaeda and a Kurdish movement. They are still very strong, uh, and they could realize the attack in the city center of Istanbul, and they could be able to kill mm -hmm. those all those people, so mm -hmm. uh, the policy must be to integrate them to the system. I want to skip ahead, I've got a little note for the booth, I want to skip ahead to the U.S. bases in the Middle East, uh, because we're, uh, we're moving fast here, but I want to show you this graphic, because on this graphic, what it is is that the countries where there's stripes on them, that's where the, the United States has military bases, uh, basically everywhere but Iran, which sticks out there in the front. Is the U.S. military base presence welcome in the Middle East? No. Of course not. So why is it Look, there? Uh, 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 during in Vietnam War, what happened to the American troops? Uh, to me, uh, the, the policies which they have adopted after the uh, end of the Soviet Union, it's again the reversal of the same thing. Uh, they are coming there without any proper homework. Uh, what do you mean by that? That's a great, a great statement, but what do you mean there's not, not proper homework? During the, I mean, for homework means that they doesn't know, look, when they attack Iraq, at that time, they doesn't know about the Sunni factor, the Shia factor. Then they just roamed into that area, and they killed hundreds and thousands of their troops. Likewise, I'm telling you that uh, Afghanistan is the most dangerous place. It's not like Iraq. Iraq was a civilized city. Afghanistan, for the last 40 years, they are fighting. So uh, I think, and uh, now the, the recent report shows it, that the death toll rises up inside Afghanistan, and particularly in the tribal, uh, the uh, uh, bordering areas closer to the Pakistan, where the Pashtun dominance is there, the real Afghans. Mm -hmm. So uh, likewise, when they come in, they, they supported the minorities inside Afghanistan. Or uh, uh, if they came in without the support of the majority, without uh, uh, winning the hearts of the Afghans, as it happened in, uh, during the uh, Soviet invasion. Mm -hmm. They come there, they uh, recruit people, they supported them, uh, not militarily, but also during their conditions, um, dozens of camps were established for the refugees people. They, they, they just win the hearts of, and the minds of the, the local populace. But now, mm -hmm. uh, when that type of situation, when they came in, they didn't get their homework so well as it happened during the Soviet invasion. So that's why now they are uh, losing the heads. Hmm. Going to be back with you in just a moment, Ishiel, because I want to ask the question, what if the U.S. just leaves militarily, not just from Iraq, but in other parts of the Middle East? But just remind everyone, go to the World Affairs Council's website, world-affairs.org, and learn an awful lot about the world around you and the world that's not right next door. And uh, thanks to Ishiel Sarayuji from um, CNN Turkey and Mohammed Hayat from Aj TV in Pakistan. We're going to learn a lot just tonight. Okay, if the U.S. leaves militarily, would that be a good thing? Uh, or what would happen? Of course, if a uh, U.S. Uh, military existence leaves suddenly from Iraq, it's not going to be a good thing for uh, the Iraq itself, but for the region too. It's going to be much more worse. The situation will worsen if, Iraq, it, if USA immediately leaves the region. Uh, in Turkey, there is not a very huge and big existence of uh, U.S. Army. Uh, we have just in the Adana region, in the uh, Mediterranean side, we have some uh, U.S. military bases. There are 
are not very welcoming. Uh, the Turkish population is not welcoming all those military uh, bases. But th there is not a big reaction because Turkey and USA we we had good relations since the history and uh, we were the aliens mm -hmm. for uh, for many years. So uh, yeah, you helped the, help the United States watch over the Soviet Union. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Uh, but the, I think the issue is uh, the military existence of uh, USA in the Iran. If uh, USA tries to intervene Iran, it's not going to be as easy as that uh, you faced in uh, Iraq. In fact, that's where we're going right now. The Los Angeles Times, uh, Iran, Mohammed, um, excuse me, Mahmoud uh, Ahmadinejad talks tough about the West. He says the big powers, this is quoting him, the big powers are going down. They have come to the end of their power, and the world is on the verge of entering a, a new promising era. Of course, he seems to talk in hyperbole exaggerations, but um, Iran is a lot of people and a lot of money and a lot of assets. Yes, uh, that, that, that's really what happened in our tribal belt, because again, there is a Sunni and Shia problem. In some of the tribal belt where the uh, Shias are playing the dominant role, they have, they've been openly supported by Iran and uh, the rest of the other forces, the Shia uh, factor. But uh, uh, you, I'll uh, let respond to your uh, first question, and that was that if the uh, U.S. troops left the area, what would happen? To me, I think, again, a civil war, because we have watched it after the withdrawal of the U.S. troops. So now, civil war in Iraq, civil war in civil Afghanistan, war in Afghanistan, civil war and in general. It will affect, obviously, it will affect the rest of the, the, the South Asia also, but the Pakistan, uh, what kind of situation is there? It's uh, directly affected our lives also uh, inside the Pakistan. So uh, to me, if uh, the U.S. troops left the area, I think that there would be another civil war in that area. So th it's not the right time wow. uh, that the U.S. troops should leave the area. But uh, again, I would say that uh, uh, the U.S. and the rest of the uh, NATO countries they should uh, uh, support the progressive movements and they should realize the situation in terms of that that where there in the region there is Iran and in the region where there is China uh, and in the region when there are the, the former uh, enemies so uh, what should the Americans uh, do I mean uh, it's really a question now that they should think about it well we're gonna have an election soon here in the United States mm -hmm. and and I know that both of you are watching the election are are your the people in your countries watching the U.S. election, and does it matter to them who wins, Obama or McCain? Of course it does matter, because uh, Bush, uh, current government, changed the image of uh, America all over the world. Uh, as I said, we were the alias with the USA, but now most of the Turkish uh, population, I can say, that hates Bush because of the policies he applied in Middle East and all over the world. Uh, so there is a huge sympathy uh, towards Barack Obama because of his, we can say, more peaceful policies and he's, uh, he's I think, thinking in, in long terms because he's skeptical about uh, intervening, uh, he's skeptical about pushing the troops from uh, Iraq immediately. That is, that is what uh, it must do. Mm -hmm. we, must, we must think about it. It's not something we, uh, USA must take the army immediately. So he's... Um, he d about the oil prices and about the economic issues, uh, he gives hope to the U.S. Uh, citizens, which means that uh, hope to the Turkish citizens, of course, because when the economy goes bad in USA, uh, it goes bad in Turkey too. Hey, uh, is it an economic world. issue? Uh, yes, sure, it is. And uh, now uh, even the Taliban and the, the, the hardliner Muslims, they are taking interest in the same U.S. elections. Uh, uh, referring to the Madin Jad, the, the president of uh, Iran, uh, probably he might see in that situation that now the U.S. what we have uh, seen for the last few days, that it's uh, it's facing two types of threats, the external threats and also the internal threats. Well, here you are facing the crisis of energy, uh, also some uh, uh, the jobs cut. Uh, today we have uh, read in your newspapers that uh, about almost 12,000 uh, people would uh, lose their, their job in coffee business. Mm -hmm. So that kind of situation, so it might, they might refer to that kind of situation externally, what happened in Iraq, and then after the fall of it in Afghanistan, and likewise, what's happening to the common people in America. We have had um, a, uh, an Iranian, he was born in Iran, and, he, and his family left Iran, and he has been here on the show, and he claims that Ahmadinejad is uh, basically a terrorist himself, and that, for the most part, the people in Iran don't support him. Is that right? I don't think so. 
I, in the region, there is a huge sympathy towards him. Yes, sure. Uh, uh, to him, uh, if, what we have heard about him, because I'm, I, I doesn't belong to Iran, but we have heard about him that uh, he is much loyal to his people. And uh, uh, administratively, he, uh, he brought uh, a lot of changes, and it's welcomed by the common people in Iran. We're running out of time. We only have about two and a half minutes left, so I've got to get to this issue, Palestine and Israel. Um, is, it, is that a big sticking point, the big sticking point for the United States in the Middle East? Of course, because it is the first power, uh, and United States must play the, 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 its role in the region. Because Turkey, for example, is playing the role. He, there is now the talks are going on between Syria and Israel, and Turkey is playing the middleman between those talks. And if Turkey does this, of course, uh, America must also play the role to bring the peace in the region. Because, uh, f especially for the Syrian side. Without America's uh, guarantee on the peace, it is impossible for them to have the peace. So uh, I think Palestine issue is a big issue for America. But this government, uh, the current Bush government, didn't play the role that it must play, mm -hmm. according to me. Does the United States continued alliance with Israel harm it uh, in its relations with Pakistan? I think it's not an issue in, uh, for a local Pakistani. I mean, if you ask for a local Pakistani where Israel is, you would not know where Israel is. But it, met, it does matter for those powers which are playing over there at the chessboard back in my country. Mm. What do you think about the media in the United States? It's a uh, really very uh, kind of individualistic approach. I mean, it's uh, really very local. Most of the people whom we met uh, doesn't even know about my country or what Afghans are, what Pashtuns are. And that's, it uh, created a lot of problems even for the policymakers who are here or for the people who matters. Mm. And I think U.S. media failed in the covering Iraq war. All these embedded journalists going there, it's a... Uh, Some of them from uh, your, uh, your yeah, company. Yeah, of course, I don't know. They, but it's influenced the image of... It influenced the trust of the people to, towards the media. Do you uh, feel that you have freedom as a media journalist in your countries? Yes, yeah, sure, I do have. Uh, we suffered a lot. But still, we believe that uh, still there is a light on the other side of tunnel. Well, I'm, I'm told that we're at the end of our time. I wish we had about two more hours. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for being thank with us, and thank you for traveling us. here in the United thank States. You. Maybe we'll get to travel to your country someday. We sure. hope so. We'll Welcome. see you right here next week on Public Exposure. Take care.